Welcome everybody. All right, so today is day two. If you've missed day one, I urge you go and have a look at that video, okay? It's a lot of information that is shared as we begin this journey where Father is leading me to do 10 days of judgment upon the earth. This is the final jud judgment that I will release upon all of mankind. And um, this is very serious, very important to understand why this is happening what is happening that is causing the judgment to come and more importantly is how do we get out from under that judgment what can we as believers do okay to ensure that we do not fall under that judgment because god is showing us a way okay so stay with me today i'm going to give you some more insight today in how to try and get out from under that okay it's the only way i can say it how to circumnavigate that how to ensure that you do not go down with the system as well that is about to collapse all right so as i explained in the first video i'm just going to do a quick recap the father gave me 10 days of judgment and he compared this with the 10 plagues of egypt because right now he sees this current kingdom of man as i explained in the first video as an Egypt because the system that man has created is enslaving its people. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And even if God didn't step in to judge, this entire system is still set to fall. It is still going to collapse. It cannot continue in the way it does. Okay. If you want to understand this, I urge you, Go look at the description box below. I've placed a link there, okay, to a video. that It's almost a two-hour video, but it's going to explain to you exactly what's going on in our economy, why this is happening, and why it's inevitable that this economic system that we created will collapse. All right, very important. Now, the current economic system that man created, like I said, has been made to enslave mankind. All right, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. It was created that way. It was strategically planned that way by the elite bankers who put this system in place, okay? Um, they created fiat money and they took it off of the gold standard. And what they did when they did that is they gave themselves the power to, to manipulate currency and the ability to print free money. So they just keep printing money, 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 because there's no standard that they have to, to weigh that fiat money on. They took it off of the gold standard so they can just keep printing, keep printing. So what happens is the inflation rises, cost prices for food and items that we buy keeps rising, taxes keep increasing, property values, um, prices for properties keep increasing. Everything just keeps increasing. And, and more importantly than all is debt keeps increasing. This is all part of the plan. Is to keep you in such bondage to debt that you are enslaved by the system because you're working your entire life to pay off your debt. Okay, you cannot quit your job. Because, oh, what about all the debt? How do I pay my house? How do I pay my car? It was a whole system that was cleverly put together that God did not create to enslave you. It's modern day slavery. Please, I urge you, go watch this video. It will explain everything much better than what I can. All right. Now, this is caused, um, this, is, this has a knock-on effect on the entire economy every single part of it okay if you look at government systems and the debt that they have accumulated let's look at america america is sitting with trillions of dollars of debt they don't make enough money to pay off that debt their government isn't dealing with it either the debt keeps increasing some of their banks are collapsing, as we saw last year. The system cannot continue to run the way it's running. 
That's why many elites, they know it. They're aware of this. And what they're doing right now, okay, is shifting your attention to other things. They're not telling you what's going on. They don't want you to know. They're drawing your attention through the media that they own to many other things, okay? So that you don't wake up and realize that you have been enslaved and that this is heading for like a doomsday. Absolutely, they know it. So they've started building bunkers, taking their riches and building bunkers. Why are the elite, think about it, why are they building bunkers underground? You know, what are they afraid of? Why are they stocking up these, these places underground where they can survive for a very long time? What do they know that we don't know? You have to ask those questions. It's time that humans start asking the right questions and stop just continuing down this path of enslavement and being blinded and just trusting everything they say. It's time that we wake up. God is calling us to wake up because if we don't, we will go down with them. They will take us down with the system that they have created. It doesn't matter how rich you are. You will go down with the system. It doesn't matter how many millions of this fiat money you have in your bank account. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> Sorry. It doesn't matter. You will go down. Do you understand that when the banks collapse, when the currencies collapse, when there's economic collapse, that money will not be accessible. You will not be able to go and draw it out. It will be worthless. It will be meaningless. Okay. I want to draw your attention to something that happened that shouted to the whole world. There is something wrong. And that's what happened in Zimbabwe. The whole world's attention was on it. But did we take note? Or do we say to ourselves, no, it's not going to happen here. But exactly what's going on in the entire world was what went wrong in Zimbabwe. And look at what's happening today. They have to take a wad of cash like this like this, to go buy a loaf of bread, one loaf of bread. That's ridiculous. And it's all because of this system. We all blame Mugabe. What we don't realize is that all of our governments are doing the same thing. Even America, they're all doing the same thing. The world systems are going to collapse and God is about to judge it because we have become just like Egypt, enslaving the human race. All right. <clears throat> now, there are some things that we can do. The Father has been leading me in this. How do we prevent ourselves from going down with the system? Well, the first thing is to wake up, to realize that there is something wrong to keep just going like the sheep after everybody else and doing the same things and thinking we'll be okay. It's not going to be okay. I'm trying to tell you that. No, I'm not some uh, conspiracy theorist. If you followed me for years, you understand that about me. I'm not like that. This is something the Father has shown me, led me in and told me to tell you and confirmed it all along the way. It is going to collapse. Yes, I know there's so many prophets saying, oh, it's going to be prosperous, it's going to be wonderful. And many follow them. You can continue to follow them and see where they lead you. But I will do what God has told me to do. And it's my job to warn you, the system is going to collapse. And not only is the system going to collapse, but God is about to pour judgment upon this kingdom of mankind. It's going to be much worse that any of you realize we have to get off of the system. All right, so wake up. That's the first step. Do your research. Go look at that video. Really take note of what is being said so that you are awakened. Because if you are awakened, you can move to do what is necessary to survive. All right.
Then the father showed me that he showed me in a dream that what some people can do. If you have a house where you earn, you still have a lot of debt on that house, especially younger people. They've just bought houses. They owe the banks lots of money. Listen, when the system collapses, you will have nothing. Nothing. Only those who actually own the property deeds of their properties and not the banks will be able to survive. So what the father showed me in a dream is that I should tell the younger generation who has bought houses, sell your houses and move back in with your family. Go live with your parents. I literally saw that in a dream. Go live with your parents. Most people's parents, houses are already paid off. They own the title deed. Go and live with them so that you can get off of this debt system. All right. Um, I saw how they build a, a little flat in the back of their parents' yard. Do that. Yes, it's not great. It's not comfortable. But right now, we have to wake up and we have to do what we have to do to survive. And then, as, the, as I've been trying to tell you for years now already, it's become self-sufficient. Grow your own food. This is very important. There's a severe famine coming. There will not be food available. Grow it yourself. Learn to grow your own food. You, you will not be able to go and buy food. Money is going to become useless. You need to learn to survive. Become self-sufficient. All right. Um, Father also showed me, this I released about two years ago, that the only thing that will still hold value as it has throughout the centuries from the beginning is gold and silver. They should never have taken us off of the gold standard because gold and silver actually has value. And therefore, if you can, if you're somebody who's really wealthy, I would, I would urge you, take that wealth and turn it into gold and silver. Invest in gold and silver, else you're going to lose everything. All right. Now, this is also very hard. You have to do this. You have to pursue this, okay? But it is going to be hard if you're not plugged into a community. So Father has also been giving us instruction of how to help, how to make a way for people to survive. And this is, this is what I've been doing. I've been doing whatever he's been telling me. We're starting a community here in the Northern Cape. There are many other communities. I don't care which community you plug into. I'm just telling you that there is more of a chance of survival if you plug into a community that is able to be self-sustainable, that is building towards that. Unfortunately, there's a lot of things that happens in these communities. I'm hearing all of the stories. So make sure you plug into the right one and that the community you're plugging into is not a cult. Because unfortunately, there's a lot of these communities rising up as well, has been for years now already. So make your, make, do your homework before you plug into any community. Make sure that it's not a cult leader that is running it. Okay? Very important. But anyway, there are good communities as well. That is just that have seen the dangers that have awoken, that are growing food, that are becoming self-sufficient, become a part of something like that if you can. All right. We're also doing it. Ours is a little bit different, though. We're not just making a self-sustainable community, although that is one of the goals. We are actually going back to biblical standards. We desire God to govern us and not man. So we're going to build the ecclesia. The church of God. We're going to live together. We're going to grow our own food. And listen, this is exciting because this vision keeps expanding. At this point, we're building a whole town. And we're going to govern it ourselves. We're going to govern it according to God's principles of governing the church because it will be a church like structure. Very different than what people are used to. It's not a church you just go on to go to on Sundays. The community will be run very differently. And we will get off of this world system we will be governed by different economy god's economy we will do things god's way we will grow our food god's way everything will be done god's way so if you're if you are interested in this please go look below join my telegram channel 
because we will be able to help you. We will be able to navigate what is coming. All right. Very important. Now, on day one, Father spoke to me and he said that he is going to pour out judgment by wind. So we're going to see destructive winds rising all across the earth. These are all types of winds that you can think of, tornadoes even, that is going to cause much destruction. He also gave us hope in day one, and he reminded us that we have power in the name of Jesus, that we can take up our authority and command the wind to be still. Listen, I've done this. I've seen it with my own eyes. It really happens. So this isn't something I'm telling you to do or God is telling us to do that holds no no weight. We were in a in a storm where there was 110 kilometer winds ripping down the trees, blowing off the roof. And we prayed and God spoke and he said in that moment, command the wind. As if, you know, hello, wake up. So I did. I commanded the wind and within 10 minutes the wind was gone. I phoned people 40 kilometers from me and asked them if the wind was still blowing and they said no. And I asked them what time that the wind stopped and it was the exact same time as it stopped by us. This is the power of our God. So this message doesn't come with just total despair and hopelessness. Please understand, God is showing us the way to survive. If only you would have ears to hear and eyes to see. Open them up. Listen and do what God is telling you to do. Else the destruction will come upon you suddenly and will catch you off guard because you did not listen. You did not stop and take note of what the Father is saying. All right. Pray that you may escape the coming judgment. Father also led us to tell you that you need to keep the coming Passover. There's a Passover happening on the 22nd of April. Okay. Now understand that the Passover represents the sacrifice of our Messiah. So what we're really needing to do is take communion on this day. All right. Take communion. Plead the blood of the Lamb over yourselves, over your properties. Anoint your doorposts and plead the blood of the Lamb, just as they did in times of Egypt. Moses told them what to do. Israel obeyed and they were saved. I'm telling you what to do. It's also very important that you remain in prayer and repentance. Okay? We need to understand things. I've done a series on Passover last year. I'm going to link that below as well. Go and watch it so that you can understand what God requires of you. That's very important. Okay, let's begin day two. For thus says the God of heaven and earth, the maker of all things. Yes, he who has given you the breath of life. He who has placed his spirit within you and made man in his image. I am the creator. I am your creator. Yes, I formed man. From the dust of the earth, I breathed life into your nostrils and gave you the gift of life. It is because of me that you exist. I formed you with great purpose to know me and to walk with me. Yet since your creation, I have been grieved. Because rarely does man turn to me to know me and to walk with me, the very one who created him. And yet this has been my desire, mankind. I have desired for you to know me. Does not all men, women and children desire to know their earthly fathers? Yet few seek to know their heavenly father and to walk with me. Few understand who I am and what I have done for you, mankind. 
Generations of men and women and children continue to rise and fall upon this earth, and few seek to know me, yet I have revealed myself to you. I reveal myself to you through the spirit I have placed within you. I reveal myself to you through all of my creation that surrounds you. I have even revealed myself to you through my son, whom I sent to die for you. I have also revealed myself to you through my word. Yet man continues to turn a blind eye, seeking they, seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, for man is stubborn and wicked. You are not even wise enough to learn from your ancestors' mistakes. For many kingdoms have risen, and many kingdoms have been destroyed by the breath of my mouth, for their wickedness was great. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed as an example to man. Noah was sent to cleanse the earth and save a remnant, and so these examples have been given to you in my word. For I am not a God that will endure the wickedness of man. I shall surely judge you, O man, and every kingdom that arises in the span of time, I will judge them according to their wickedness. Those who walk in righteousness to know me shall be blessed. And those who close their eyes and ears from my existence shall be cursed. For kingdoms shall rise and kingdoms shall fall. And you are at the precipice of a kingdom that is about to fall. For the wickedness of man has become great again. Yes, the wickedness I have endured watching upon this earth in the kingdom of man has been more severe than any other time and any other kingdom before it. Take that in. Worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Worse than the days of Noah. And look what happened to them. Therefore you will endear the wrath of the Almighty. For the clock has now struck on judgment. Judgment has begun. And my cup of wrath shall be poured out on all mankind. For the earth shall reel to and fro, and all of man shall drink of my judgment. Only a remnant shall be saved. For I have declared judgment from the heavens upon this current kingdom of man. It shall be utterly destroyed, all the work of your hands. All of your greatness shall lie in your rubble and ruins. For I have declared it, and I have decreed it, and who shall annul it? Once I have spoken. <clears throat> For thus says the Holy Spirit. I am the God of heaven and earth. And judgment has been decided upon you, O mankind. Your kingdom shall be destroyed, for judgment is at hand. I will destroy all that you have built. I will destroy all of your great technologies. I will destroy all the wisdom of man. I will destroy your skyscrapers and your large corporations with my mighty hand, for I have decreed it, I have declared it, I have pronounced judgment against you, mankind. Hearing you will not hear, and seeing you will not see, until judgment is at your door. Therefore, take heart and listen, my children, for I am calling you to separate yourselves from the kingdom of man. I am calling you to open your eyes to see and your ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying and declaring to you. For judgment must come because of man's great wickedness but a remnant shall be saved. All who have ears to hear and a heart to receive my instructions. Remove yourselves from their wickedness as I removed Lot from Sodom and Gomorrah before I rained down my judgments. So I am calling my children to come out of Babylon, come out of Egypt, 
Come out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Separate yourselves from among them, for my judgment shall be severe. It shall not tarry, it shall not delay, for the cup of judgment is overflowing, and I have judged the earth for all its wickedness, for I shall destroy it with wind and fire. The flames of my burning indignation shall not be quenched until it is spent upon mankind. Until you have drunk every last drop of my judgment, then the earth shall rest in quietness again. The fires of my judgment shall spread from one end of the earth to the other. <clears throat> Continents shall be shaken. <clears throat> Continents shall be completely transformed and made, listen, made unrecognizable. Continents. Landscapes shall be changed. Ecosystems destroyed by the fires of my wrath. For great shall be the judgment on you, mankind, for all the evil you have done. Wind shall fan the flames of my fire, and it shall run like a horse galloping at full speed. It shall not be stopped, and it shall not be quenched, until it has accomplished all I have sent it for. Fires shall rage, and the smoke shall reach up to heaven as the earth languishes from the heat of my wrath. Many shall lose their lives in the fires of my wrath, for you did not hear, O man, you did not listen. I shall destroy your high towers, I shall destroy your corporations, I shall destroy your economy with the fire that proceeds from my mouth. For I have spoken, I have declared it, and who shall annul it? The mouth of Adonai, Elohim, has spoken. All right, Father, also let me to give you some of the scriptures he's been giving me. Let's go to Isaiah 34. From verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. Its streams shall be turned into pitch and its dust into brimstone. Its land shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night or day. Its smoke shall ascend forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. No one shall pass through it forever and ever. This has happened to certain kingdoms. But they've been so utterly destroyed they've never been inhabited again. But the pelican and the porcupine shall possess it. Look how God gives back the earth to his creation. Also the owl and the raven shall dwell in it, and he shall stretch out over it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call its nobles to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all its princes shall be nothing. And thorns shall come up in its palaces. We have... We have sites that, are, that, that this was fulfilled in on this earth. Cities that were uncovered, that's completely overtaken by the wild now. Where thorns are growing in the palaces. Nettles and brambles in its fortresses. It shall be a habitation of jackals, a courtyard for ostriches. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the jackals. And the wild goat shall bleed to its companion. Also the night creatures shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There the arrow snake shall make her nest and lay eggs and hatch and gather them under her shadow. There also the hawks will be gathered, everyone with her mate. Look how God clears out man and gives it back to the, the wild animals. Search from the book of the Lord and read. Not one of these shall fail. Not one shall lack her mate, and for my mouth has commanded it, and his spirit has gathered them. <clears throat> All right. Let's read Isaiah 14 from verse 22. 
It says, For I will rise up against them. <clears throat> I will cut off from Babylon, Babylon the name and the remnant and offspring and posterity. I will also make it a possession for the porcupine and marshes of muddy water. I will sweep it with the broom of destruction. This was said by the Lord in my seven-day fire prophecy. He said, I'm going to sweep the earth with my broom of fire. The Lord of hosts has sworn, surely I have thought it, so it shall come to pass. As I have purposed, so it shall be. Okay? Here in this scripture, I want you to go through it yourself. We see so many kingdoms being prophesied over that will be destroyed. Babylon, Assyria, Philistia, Moab, Syria, Israel, and it goes on and on. Ethiopia, Egypt. So many kingdoms that Isaiah, Isaiah is prophesying over that their end is coming. Okay, Some will be destroyed utterly. Others will be judged and rebuilt eventually like Israel. But so God judges the earth for man's wickedness. Go with me to Isaiah 26 verse 20. Come, my people, it says, enter your chambers. This is important. Hide, it says, sorry, and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past, until judgment has been passed. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. Here, judgment is being prophesied over the entire earth. And God speaks to his people. He says, hide yourselves a little bit. Do what I'm telling you, because I'm going to judge the earth. All right? And there's a way to be saved if you obey me. He's doing the same thing now. Are we going to listen? Will we listen to his instructions, or are we going to go down with the judgment? Here's another scripture he gave me. So many. Isaiah 24. Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste. Listen, distorts its surface. This is what he spoke about in this prophecy. And trust me, more is coming about this. And scatters abroad its inhabitants. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. As with the servant, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the creditor, so with the debtor. No one will escape. The land shall be entirely emptied and utterly plundered. For the Lord has spoken this word. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth language, languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants. This is what we've done. Because they have transgressed the laws. Changed the ordinance. Change the way God ordained for this planet to work. We have changed it completely. We have broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore the curse has devoured the earth, and those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned, and few men are left. The new wine fails. The vine languishes, the merry-hearted sigh, the mirth of the tambourine ceases, the noise of jubilant ends, the joy of the harp ceases. They shall not drink wine with a song. Strong drink is bitter to those who drink it. The city of confusion is broken down. Every house is shut up so that none may go in. People will hide in their houses again. There is a cry for wine in the streets. All joy is darkened. The mirth of the land is gone. In the city, desolation is left. The gate is stricken with destruction. When it shall be thus in the midst of the land among the people, it shall be like the shaking of an olive tree, like the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. 
Verse 17, fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth, and it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit, and he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth are shaken. The earth is violently broken. This is prophesied in the word of God. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it and it will fall and not rise again. This is the word of God. All right. Also turn with me, sorry, to Amos 1. Last, last one. Amos 1, from verse 3. Judgment on the nations. For three transgressions of Damascus and for four, I will not turn away its punishment, because they have threshed Gilead with implements of iron. But I will send a fire into the house of Hazil, which shall devour the palaces of Ben-Hadad. I will also break the gate bar of Damascus and cut off the inhabitant from the valley of Aven. And the one who holds the scepter from ben Beth Eden, the people of Syria, shall go captive to Kir. For thus says the Lord, for three transgressions of Gaza and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they took captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. But I will send a fire upon the wall of Gaza, which shall devour its palaces. I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod and the one who holds the scepter from Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish. perish. Judgment being spoken over everybody on the earth in that time. For three transgressions of Tur and for four, I will not turn away its punishment because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom and did not remember the covenant of brotherhood. These are even, these are pagan kingdoms that God is judging. Take note of this. Because he is the God of all the earth. He made it. And he will judge wickedness. You think Sodom and Gomorrah knew God? Yet he judged them anyway for their wickedness. So we are in error. If we think, oh, because of Jesus, we will not experience judgment again. Because God does judge the earth. When man is filled with wickedness. He pulls out judgment. This is prophesied up into the book of Revelation. He continues to do so. You can go read the rest yourself. Even into chapter 2. He's judging the whole earth. He keeps doing it. And this is what he says. Like, are you not, you know, you're not even wise enough to learn from the past. Every time we build a kingdom, we think we're better than, than the previous kingdoms. We somehow think that God won't judge us. Every single time, man doesn't learn its lesson, even though it's written in the scriptures. It's, it's written in our history books. We even see the sites of these kingdoms that have been utterly destroyed. Yet still, we do not listen. I'm telling you now, there's little voices that's telling you, ah, oh, that won't happen. What's she talking about? Doomsday prophet, whatever. Conspiracy theorist. Continue to listen to them. And you'll see what happens. But those of you who have ears to hear and a heart to receive, you need to move. You need to do whatever God places on your heart. Pray. You need to get off of this world's systems. It will collapse. All right. Shalom.